Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with another Tip Tuesday video for you guys. I know it's been a hot minute since I've had a Tip Tuesday video. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I will link the playlist down below. Tip Tuesday is a series that I started a few years ago, um, and the idea and premise behind Tip Tuesday was just that, to bring you guys little tips from my crafty space. It may not always be the best way, correct way, only way to do something. It's just little tips that I've learned and that work for me in my crafty space. Uh, and I know you guys have gotten a lot of use out of those tips. So you can peruse that playlist. There's a variety of things. It started out just meaning to be like a five minute video showing you, you know, a tip for using adhesive or how to clean your stamps or whatever it might be. And then over time, it kind of evolved into a um, variety of things, looking at specific products like Neocolor 2 crayons or gelatos and giving you guys tips and tricks on how to use those and things like that. So over time, I have kind of run out of ideas for these videos just because I've shown so many of the tips and tricks and I don't just have an endless supply of tips. Um, but Today was one that I wanted to share with you guys. So um, hang tight while we kind of go through this. I don't, not sure how long this is going to be or how well it's going to translate over onto video, but this was a question that I'd seen pop up quite a bit. Um, and then a crafty friend of mine specifically was having issues. And so I thought I would do a video for all of you guys. So what I have here is a We Are Memory Keepers typewriter. I get a lot of questions about the typewriter that I use when you see typed font in my projects. Um, and this is what I'm using. Now, a few years ago, my husband husband did buy me I think I've gone through two vintage typewriters we were on the hunt going to antique stores trying to find just you know the most beautiful vintage typewriter I love that look the aesthetic all that but along with antique typewriters usually comes a lot of frustration and headaches because they're old so it's hard to find places that do repair work on them um, it may even be impossible to find replacement ribbons um, just various things so I kind of struggled through those two antique ones before um, finally settling on the We Are Memory Keepers typewriter. Now, I had read a lot of mixed reviews about this typewriter. There are a lot of mixed reviews about this typewriter. So, you know, this is just what works for me. It may not work for you. Um, but my husband did find this one. He is my little treasure trove finder. He finds such good deals for me. He's, he's good at that. So he found this at a Tip Tuesday, or not Tip Tuesday, Tuesday morning <laughs> on sale. Now, I would definitely suggest trying to find this typewriter on sale. Um, one of the biggest complaints in the reviews is just how it does feel a little cheap. Um, and so for the price point, I do feel like, it's a little higher price than it should be. I mean, that's just coming from my ignorance. You know, I'm sure it takes a lot to build the inner components of this typewriter, but the outside is plastic. It feels a little bit flimsy. I have used it for a few, a few years now. I've not had any problems. I've not had anything break, um, but it doesn't feel as solid as some of the vintage ones that I've used, but it is consistent. It gets the job done. It works for me. I'm not afraid of some creepy crawly crawling out of it that's been there for 20 years. <laughs> like it's, it's clean and it's good to go. So this is what I've switched to using. So they do sell the replacement ribbons for this typewriter. However, I, I don't know if they're phasing them out or what. It is a little bit harder to find them. I will try to link some resources down below. I found things on eBay, office supply stores, but you can also use um, other branded ribbons. So today's Tip Tuesday is specifically talking about replacing the ribbon, um, how to get the most use out of your ribbon. I'm not going to go into the details of all the nitty gritty of how this typewriter works. One, because I don't know all the nitty gritty. I still am learning how to use this thing. Um, there aren't a whole lot of videos on YouTube showing, you know, tips and tricks and things like that. That's kind of why I wanted to create this video. Um, but as far as like how to use all of the different um, features that it has, I'm not the best at that. So maybe in the future, there will be a video for that. I will link the We Are Memory Keepers video um, down below. It's pretty quick, concise, to the point of the various features. And I, I don't think I need to redo that. They're pretty good about that. So you can check that out. Um, today will just be about the ribbon. So like I said, you can get the We Are Memory Keeper ones, or you can use a comparable ribbon that is a like knockoff, no name brand. I've done that as well. And the ribbons come, I've, can you tell it's summer? I've got bugs. <laughs> That's California for you. Anyways, they come in a variety of combinations. So typically they're two different colors, though they do have solid one color ones as well. Um, the We Are Memory Keeper ones do have a variety of fun colors. I think there's like teal, there might be purple. Um, I know there's red, different things like that. Again, they are kind of hit or miss with where you can find them. And there are some that have a white out strip. I think that's more with the off-brand ones. And so 
It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of ribbon on here. And if you're just reaching the end and swapping out, it does seem like you're going through these fairly quickly and you don't need to do that. I wanna show you how you can get the most use out of one of these ribbons. So this was just a spare one. I think I ordered like a two pack. So I haven't even touched this one yet. I'm gonna show you how to rewind the one that is on here. So to access the ribbon, you just need to pull this panel off. So you pull it down towards you. So you're pulling it this way and then it will pull off and that's going to expose all of the mechanics in your typewriter. And what I have here is a, it looks like black and white, but it's actually black and clear. If you know why they do the clear one, please leave me a comment down below. It feels useless to me. I don't understand it. I don't know if you're able to do maybe a resist technique. I, that's maybe something to try, but I don't even use the bottom. I prefer when it has a white out um, option on the bottom. If you can find that one, that's what I prefer. Um, but this is this is clear and then black on top so when it's um I guess I should back up a little bit. So there is this little indicator here. It's BLK and CLR. This is referencing the areas of your ribbon. So you've got black and clear. That's just kind of their standard. However, you just interchange that with whatever color you're using. So I have it down to the black um indicated so it's hitting at the top it's hitting the black area so if I go ahead and type I'm going to get a black um, L if I move this up to clear I get clear or red or whatever your other color is and so you may you know if you're just opening the box or if you haven't touched it in a while you may have to kind of play with this to figure out where it's striking on the strip but I want it hitting on black now what you will happen is as you're typing so I'm going to type you'll see that now it's not striking, I'm not getting anything, it's fading out, what is going on? I have hit the end of this ribbon, and so if I turn this over, you'll be able to see there's a little silver eyelet right there. The eyelet is hitting these black plastic posts. Uh, you may find that eyelet on the other side of those posts. If you are really gung-ho and just keep trying to type, it will jump the post and it will actually run into right here. But that eyelet is indicating the end of the ribbon. There is no like chime or noise or anything like that that happens when you hit the end. You'll just find it's not typing the way that you wanted it to type. That means you've reached the end. That does not mean it's the end of the life of your ribbon spool. So let me show you a couple different options options here for how to do that. The one that I, I don't know, the easy shortcut, probably not correct way, I'm going to show you first. So you've got these little spring levers. Those need to be pulled away to be able to pull your spools off. Um, so you're just going to pull straight up and then pull this out of those black posts and then I'm going to remove it from these little pieces here. Now there is a clearer video on the We Are Memory Keepers video that you can see so if you wanted to see how to change it um, go ahead and watch that. So this is how it was loaded. I had black on top and then that white strip on the bottom. Now if I just take this and flip it so now the clear or white is on top and black is on bottom that is the easiest way to do this. So now my eyelet you'll see is over here. I'm actually just now going to go through that ribbon again. So there is plenty of toner on these ribbons. You don't, they're not just one use. You can get several uses out of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back the way it was. If it is your first time taking this apart, I would recommend taking a picture first. That way you can refer back to it. If you, you know, forget how something goes or you're struggling, you've got that that picture to refer back to. Um, it's super helpful. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see how it is loaded. So it's threaded through those black posts. It's behind this metal piece here, threaded through those little hooks through the black post and then put back onto there. Now, if I don't do anything and I go to type, I still am not gonna see anything. That's because we've changed the order of the ribbon. So now I need to switch this out. So this is, like I said, the cheater, not the way you're supposed to do it, but it works, it's quick and easy. So now it says clear, but I'm actually typing with the bottom section. So just by switching that, now I can use a different part. So I just kind of ignore the black and the clear and just 
use it <laughs> however my ribbon is loaded. So again, that is the, the cheater way to do it. But let me show you another way in case you don't wanna have to fuss with trying to remember what side you know, you're know you using. You don't wanna have to mess with this lever. Um, you want everything setting wise to stay the same. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this back out. I'm going to flip it back over so it is the orientation that it was originally, again, I've got the end of the spool there. And then you can just wind it manually. So just like this, I'm just winding it back so that the majority of the ribbon is on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is where it feeds from as you type. That's probably the easiest way to remember that. And so then you're just gonna do the same thing. You're just going to wind this all back to the right side and then load it back into your typewriter and you are good to go. So again, I have been using this same ribbon for well over a year at this point. And I create every week, I almost use it every week, um, depending on how much you're using your typewriter will determine how often you have to do this. And there will reach a point when you've pretty much used all the toner from the ribbon and you're gonna have to swap out to a new ribbon, but they're not just one time use. You can use these over and over and over again um, until you know, you're know you not getting the look that you want on the paper, it's not dark enough. Um, sometimes you can find that you're reaching the end of the spool um, when you start getting like a ghost impression. It's very, very light, even before you hit that um, whole, the metal piece, you will start to get a light type sometimes towards the end and that'll indicate that you're towards the end of your ribbon spool. So I'm just, as you can see, there's quite a bit on, on here. And I'm just going to keep rolling it. And as you can see, I mean, it doesn't look very used, but like I said, I've been using it for over a year. So let me go ahead and just finish winding this up. Okay, so you can see now I have wound the majority over to the right-hand side. You can see I'm hitting the little metal grommet. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Can you tell my stroke brain is in full effect right now? Uh, anyways, you can see I've reached that metal piece on the left side indicating the end of the ribbon. Um, I want that piece on the other side of these plastic posts. If it's on this, if it's on the right side of the plastic posts, it won't go through the posts and it will stop. It won't let you keep typing. So you do wanna make sure that you start that just to the left of the post. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and just load this back into my typewriter. The hardest part I think is just getting that white post through the center of the roll. That is what I struggle the most with. I'm gonna go ahead and thread that between those plastic posts behind the metal piece here. And then I'm gonna thread it through those little hooks. Again, the ribbon is on the back side of that metal piece, as you can see. I'm gonna go in between those two black posts again and then load this side onto there. And now I've got it loaded up full on the right-hand side so I can go ahead and type through there again. Also just making sure that I am on the correct, I'm on the clear, I'm not on the correct. So I wanna make sure I'm on the black. I'm just gonna move that over just a little bit. And now, I'm typing, no problem. You can see it's nice and black, even though I've gone through this ribbon spool several times, I'm still getting a crisp, clean image. So, and then this just gets slid back that way to lock it into place and I'm good to go. So I can hang on to this. It's gonna be a while before I need to use another ribbon. So I hope that gives you a little bit of help when you're using your We Are Memory Keepers typewriter or any typewriter for that matter. It does not have to be this one specifically, but a way to get the most bang out for your buck out of these ribbon spools. I imagine they will probably be, you know, harder and harder to find as time goes. Um, as we get further and further away from typewriters being, you know, the method of, you know, that we use and document things really has just come back to like the scrapbooking journaling world. I don't want to see it go away. So I want to stock up on ribbons and get the most use I possibly can out of them. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Again, check out the description box down underneath the video for links to the other Tip Tuesday videos, um, any other resources that I have, links to where you can purchase the items that I showed in the video. Those will all be down below for you guys. Um, hopefully in the future, I will have a more detailed video about this typewriter 
whatever. Uh, I don't know, it's still a learning process, but at least that should get you started with one feature of the typewriter. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if it was helpful, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.